note uh, blah 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 and uh, you, you will see why I put uh, this uh, a bit moderate title because uh, I couldn't prove associativity yet so <laughs> but anyway so now I want to talk something about this then I just want to explain the situations I, I want to work with we consider some symplectic manifold which is compact and we consider codimension to some manifold with the almost complex structure which is integrable in the neighborhood of D and it's a codimension 2 and the complex summary so it's a, if you do not like so much because in practice you can just regard x as a kera and d uh, divisor smooth divisor uh, then i just want to review what is the novikov ring novikov ring is just a formal power series ring <laughs> or in, in, in this kind of series and i want to use real coefficient today so you have this uh, ci ti lambda i and lambda i go to plus infinity and uh, yeah, this is non-negative, I, I will put lambda zero. And uh, the variation is the uh, smallest exponent. And I want to put extra two parameter, q and q inverse. And this is just one parameter, but uh, you have this kind of infinitely many lower series. And the assumption is that this coefficient uh, goes to zero in the steadic node as n goes to plus or minus infinity. So, so this is very defined thing. So it's some, some kind of a, uh, to, to extra one extra parameter of ring. And uh, so oh, now it's, it that's like the yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> So in, in this situation we consider this H. Uh, H is uh, so I I I I'll explain something about need to this so it is something like a uh, homology group of the divisor or complement of the divisor with this no of ring coefficient plus this is a unit S1 bundle on this uh, 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 normal bound of, uh, of D in X. And then we, des we take this uh, two, two extra parameter value, homology group. And uh, actually there is some problem how to put this, uh, how, how to, there are some relation this guy and with this uh, coefficient of Q to the power zero, and we need to make some adjustment. That which, which, which I, I, I don't yet so much completely understand. That's why uh, I note in, in, in my title. But anyway. So now I, I, I want to show that I want to prove that uh, there is uh, some uh, ring structure on this H. Probably better to say guess they have a algebra structures on this uh, vector space. And uh, let me recall some uh, cases which is already known. That is the case when this uh, complement of the divisor is uh, convex. It means that the divisor has some positivity. Then, uh, then I press of this. Uh, uh, in place of this Novikov ring, <laughs> we consider this uh, hx minus d, which is Novikov ring coefficient, plus this. So, so this guy means that uh, for this uh, S1 part, uh, for this part near the divisor, you have only positive power. So not negative power, only strictly positive power. And this is basically, uh, this is this is as a group is basically symplectic, non-equivalent symplectic yeah, homology. Actually, this is one word and not e. One person. One person, it's not just one person. Okay. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I attended yesterday Hubbard's 90 year birthday conference as a uh, year ago, and he was very, he looks very fine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. A anyway, anyway, so now I want to, I want to say that this bourgeois Russia and several people, the peoples, do this uh, business in order to get define this structure. Yeah. So, so there's actually should also be a differential in general. Be yes, 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 yeah, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's something related to what I mentioned. So maybe, maybe it's more precisely differential gear step or something. We just use this. So, it's, so, so, so now what is known in this case is, so, so this is, this is a, called a symplectic homology. So you, you use this some Hamiltonians to define symplectic homology and use complexity to prove compactness. And uh, what is known in this uh, situations of, so this is a special case of symplectic homology because uh, Usually, super homology, you have only kind of uh, R actions in, uh, in the end, but you have this cyst uh, action, so that's a bit better structure. But anyway, the conclusion is that in this case, you have this case, the half algebra structure here. And uh, my main point I want to explain today is that uh, you try to generalize this in the case when D is not uh, positive, I mean, the complement is not complex, then you cannot do in the same way. This, 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 this part is small, so you have to add zero or negative part of Q. And to, to get the uh, structures and uh, so, so did you assume D is smooth? Yes, oh. yet smooth. So I, I expect you can do a normal crossing, but then you have to increase the Q to, to several. But that, that, that's 
even further. Okay, so now I, I want also uh, other things ab about open close map. So we have to use the same uh, H. Then we consider this uh, uh, ABK category, and whose object is a Lagrangian sum manifold with the divisor complement. And uh, so, so this is uh, some version of non-compact Lagrangian player theory, but which is not yet so much explored very carefully. And uh, what I, I'm writing about, Eric Badami and myself, is uh, to do some Lagrangian player theory on, in this particular situation. But now it's compact. So even though this is not complex, then you can you can cook up this category. Then uh, we can expect that this this uh, algebra should, should should give a deformation of this category. So you you know that in the case of uh, compact simplex manifold, then if you have a AVT category, then 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 you have this uh, quantum cohomology which gives a map to the Hoshi cohomology, and that is a uh, that that gives a deformation on the quantum cohomology parameterized by the ambient cohomology, and this is a kind of uh, closed open map or uh, bulk deformation story. And uh, in the case of uh, uh, convex cases, there are similar story from symplectic homology to the Hoshi homology of the category, and that is like a poly those people study. And, uh, and, and, and then th this homomorphism actually is very much an uh, important role in homological, uh, in mirror symmetry. I think an original proposal by Kosevich is to prove usual mirror symmetry via homological mirror symmetry is used this isomorphism. Because if you know from this uh, category, then you, you, you can see this quantum cohomology by this asymptote. So that's, I think, is an idea of this. One of the ideas in 94 papers. So, so what I want to do is that I want to extend this story in a case when D is uh, not, not necessarily positive. So you have all, all these positive and negative things. And this kind of thing was proposed by, I think, uh, Mark Ross several years ago in a conference at uh, UCLA. And uh, also last year in, in, in Italy at Barese, uh, Mark Ross explained why you need negative power Q. And uh, I try to understand what he is going to, what he was talking. And uh, something I understand is what I want, I want to talk. So, so I want to very explain very specific things. So, what, what is important here is that you know, in the case it is not convex, then this cohomology of this uh, divisor complement is actually not a subring. So, if you want to, if you want to try to construct ring structure only on this divisor complement, then uh, you may define something, but it is not associative. And you need to add something for the, which which related to this uh, D to get something associated. So that's the main thing I want to explain in this talk. So uh, I believe almost everybody here knows how to prove associativity in quantum cohomology. But uh, for completeness, I want to start it a bit. So, what, what, so, so now let me pick up review what was uh, quantum cohomology and its uh, ring structure. So because, so, but since uh, I think uh, this is a mirror symmetry conference, so I know that, I, I believe most of the audience knows, so I want to rather brief. So we consider this uh, uh, moduli space of uh, x with L mark point from S2, genus 0, and, uh, and then the stable map. And then uh, they have an evaluation map from this x to the power L, so that you evaluate at each mark point. Then uh, if you have uh, three cycles, uh, yeah, let, let me, let me, let me uh, this is x, but uh, this, may, this, is, this is x, but you can consider x by the also. Then this associativity should be, you consider this uh, three-point mark point, and you hit this uh, three cycles, and you count it with this uh, weight of symplectic area. So that's the usual quantum cohomology. So I draw pictures. So you have this uh, S2, and then you require that this hit these three devices, and you count it. And with, with the way that is quantum cohomology. So now, why this uh, quantum cohomology is uh, associative? Then the standard proof, which goes back, I don't know, but I think it is observed by five past five physicists, like uh, Waffa, he wrote this uh, quantum ring. So, so I think this came from physics idea. And, 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 but then uh, this uh, proof is, is, is the following. You consider this uh, uh, modular space of uh, spheres with four mark points. And you hit with these four divisors, and then you have this uh, obvious forgetful map to M4. M4 is just the usual three manifold type modular spaces with of S2 with four mark points. Then uh, this modular space is actually just S2, which is uh, very standard. And then we consider this, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so, so this is a modular space because they have this S2 with four mark points, and you, you assu assume that this hit, uh, these four cycles uh, intersect with this. Uh, uh, S2, and then, then uh, this uh, the one-point modular space is S2, and it has uh, three special points, 
I want to focus with two the special points, x1, 2. x1, 2 is uh, this picture. You have this uh, no down s2. So that z1, first and second mark point lies in the one component. And third and fourth mark point lies in the other component. We have another singular picture, z1, 4. This is z1 and z4 lies on one component. z2 and z3 lies on the other component. We have these two points, x1, 2 and uh, x1, 4. So we consider this uh, uh, m4 with two mark points. And the idea of the proof of associativity, as you see, is the following things. So you consider this uh, a forget for map. You consider the moduli space of x4, pseudo from a curve to, uh, to x, which intersects with these four cycles. Then you consider the fiber of these two particular points, x12 and x14. Then if you, you count, maybe, maybe you assume that the uh, um, dimension is zero, and you assume more transversality, and you count, the over order of these two fibers, and the fiber of x12 is actually this uh, p1, p2. First, we are multiply p1, p2, and multiply p3, and the Poincare duality with p4. And this one, x1, 2, 3, 1, 4, are too, too fast to multiply to 1, 3, and multiply p1, and then Poincare duality with p4. So you have these two, two points, and the order of the fiber corresponds to these two different forms of this associativity relations. Now, we take this uh, path, which goes from x12 to x24. Then uh, you just take the inverse image of this path. Then this inverse image gives a cobalism between these two fibers, you, you, you can naturally expect. Then, then uh, the, the number is the same, so you have this associativity relation. So that is very classical proof of associativity, which maybe everybody in this room knows. So now, I want to explain, if you want to do this, the same business, in x minus d, then uh, what do you fail? So if you fail, the reason is that, so, so now we, we consider this alpha to be a homology class, for example, which do not intersect with d. So you assume alpha u2, cap d is zero. So then uh, kind of, then geometrically it doesn't intersect. Then you consider this moduli space. And then uh, what you know is that in the case when d is uh, convex, in the ca case when d is, x minus d is convex, and the p1, p2, p3, p4 is a complement divisor, this uh, moduli space is actually compact. You can include nodes, but you, don't, you, you still assume you never hit d. Then it is still compact because of this convexity. So now, then, then you can do the same argument. You run the same argument as the compact case, and you can prove as a tip. That is a kind of one of the very important points why you use uh, convexity in this uh, story of the written theory. On the other hand, Suppose we are in a situation when x minus d is not compact and it's not convex, then this convexity fails. So you have something which is which go to infinity and this uh, cobalism argument does not work, so the associativity may fail. So now, now so then, uh, I, uh, then I, I went to study uh, kind of how, how to kind of save this uh, non-compactness and to, to try to see what is the effect you see at this uh, infinity. And the usual stable map compactification is not so much uh, uh, nice for this purposes. And for such purposes, there are compactifications uh, which I want to call relative gromophytic theory compactifications. And uh, I think uh, my, my first, uh, my, my, my work with this Arikaba Taimi is mainly for, uh, to, to do the similar compactifications for Lagrangian player theory. But you still, you try to do this uh, associativity problems, you can try to use the same uh, compactifications. It seems rather strange that people working on this uh, relative gravity theory never talk about this kind of associativity questions. If I made a mistake, please tell me. But I, I try to look some reference that nobody talk about associativity in this kind of theory. So there are some nasty things appeared on this, on this issue. So that's uh, something I want to explain today. So now, before I, I explain, so this is, uh, there are many references about this relative gromophytic theory compactifications in algebraic side, John Lee, and uh, I think the smooth divisor case, John Lee did very nice works, and then gross g generalized it to this normal gross divisor case, and it's a practical side, there are several works, and uh, Yonel Parker, Amin Lee, and Yonbin Wang, and Brad Parker, Mohamed Teplani, and uh, Alex Zingas. There are several, several issues about it. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to talk so much about it. <laughs> okay. Now, so
so, so, so what I want to today, it's amazing in, in my talk today is that uh, I want to consider this very particular element of this reactive flow with the applications. Actually, these configurations I, I, I talked much in uh, last year in, uh, in this uh, Simon collaboration conference in uh, New York City. And, uh, I, but uh, at that, that time, I, I, my main focus is on this uh, uh, Lagrangian flare theory. And uh, in, in that case, uh, the conclusion is that we, we, we don't need to start think about it. We can, we can erase the, the effect of this. Uh, but this uh, boundary. But so, so in a sense, it is okay. But it's, it's uh, so today. I want to I want to explain that this this one actually has some non-trivial effect for the pro for the problems. So in some sense, it is more interesting because this is this has uh, some non-trivial effect. So I want to explain this particular element. So you have this uh, uh, disk with uh, four three. Yeah. Is it still going to be true that the actual homology? Rajan for category, your category, this ring. Pardon? So the, the ring you're going to build out of this thing. Will it yes. be the yes. homology? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, homology, no. I mean, homology uh, homology just came from algebraic, algebra, 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 but this, uh, in, a, in a case of the player theory, this happened in co-dimension 2, and for a player theory, you can forget it. The, the, the thing I'm confused about is that then you should also be able to perform, I think you should also be able to get the Hochschild homology in that category. If that category no, no, is no, 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 then also no, no. Hochschild homology. So, so you can, I, think, I think basically the proof that the map of one homology and Hochschild homology is a ring homomorphism, yeah. the same sort of issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, some yeah. relative... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you will see that, that that's a kind of the main part of my talk. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but also for KT where I think you get kind of uniqueness, but it's kind of fake. It's, you have space and you remove a lot of co-dimension to see, so that's yeah. a monodromy. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so now I want to explain what this configuration means. That yeah. You have one particular S2 which is completely contained in this divisor. And you have two other components which are outside the divisor. And you have four marked points, one of them here and the other, the other here. So we call that this uh, configuration. And uh, this two and three, is, uh, this S2, uh, intersects with this device only at this point, and its intersection multiplicity is 2. And this 3, this, this S2 intersects with D, with intersection multiplicity is 3. So, so you are, this is particular configuration. <laughs> and 2 and 3 is not special. It's, it's just, uh, I just take 2 and 3 as the simplest of them. You have any P and Q. So now, yeah, it is something I explained here. So let me remind you that so, so this S2 intersection number D, D is 2, and this is 3. So it means that this, this S2 has the intersection number at least uh, uh, is uh, minus 5. So you have this S2 completely contained in this divisor. And you, you take the cap product of, uh, cap, cap product of this homology class with divisor homology class, you get a minus 5. And then in total, the homology class intersects with the divisor 0. So that happens. And then this kind of thing happens only in case this S2 can have a negative, negative chain number, ne negative intersection with D. And this is related to this uh, positivity of D. So you, you don't have a positivity, so this, so this can happen. If you have a positivity, this, this kind of computation does not happen. That's why you can prove compactness. OK. So now, one important point I want to make, make here is that if you consider usual stable map compactification, this one appears in codimension 4. Because in the stable map compactification, codimension of the splatter is just twice the number of double points. You, you, you. So you have about any 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 kind this kind of configuration. You have a k double point, and then you have a, each each double point. You have the, the two the area of freedom to resolve this. And it is, you have two dimensions, so you have two k, and it, this has a two singular point. So in the usual stable map compactification, this, this happens in dimension four, but in the relative group between compactifications, actually this uh, this has a dimension two. You will see later. So this this difference between dimensions make a very important difference. So if, if this happens only in dimension 4, actually you can forget it, even for the proof of associativity. But it says, so th that, that's why in a, in a usual, uh, usual proof of, uh, usual, uh, usual proof of associativity, you don't see this kind of configurations. But in a kind of relative probability theory type associativity argument, we need to study this, uh, this phenomenon. So that's, that's one reason. And uh, so let me say a bit more. So this, this space is uh, described by a fiber product. 
So you have these three components. So this guy, and you, so you have this uh, three moduli space, and you can, you can describe this uh, moduli spaces as a fiber product of three irreducible components. Let me explain each of them. So this, uh, this, this zero, zero, two meter, this has a intersection number zero with D, and this is also intersection number zero with D. And the third one intersects D by multiplicity two. So this is zero, zero, two. And you have alpha one. So you, this is a moduli space of uh, S2, which intersect with D002. So that is this moduli spaces. And then, and, and then we have this similar moduli spaces of this 003. So you have this uh, three points, uh, S2 with three points. And this does intersect, this does intersect, and this intersect with D with multiplicity three. So you have another moduli spaces. And the third one is, is this. So this is M2 D alpha 2. This means that this, this is a S2 contained in D, not in X. And you have these two map points, and you know, this is just usual global Witten type moduli spaces with two map points. So this you have this three map three moduli spaces, and you have this uh, fiber product. So th this guy described here, and this guy described here, and this guy described here, and this map point gi gives a variation map to D, and you, you equate that they are equal. So this is a fiber product of D. So you have three modular spaces and the fiber product, double fiber product of D. So this is a kind of fiber product descriptions of this particular modular spaces. So now I want to make some simplified assumptions. And let me write M0 is this fiber product. Yeah, and then from this uh, M0, we have this uh, map of, of this, uh, of this uh, variation map of these four remaining map points, which goes to by the complement to the power force. So that's a, that's a situation. That's somewhat similar to the situation of this uh, written cases. And uh, then I want to take this four cycles, P1, P2, P3, P4, and so that I want to equate that this moduli space hit this four points. So that, that is the situation that I want to study. And this is very similar to what you observed. Cycles compact, yeah. Cycles are compact in the yeah. Some compactness might appear, but let me surpass that compactness. So now I want to I want to assume some simplified assumptions. That, that can be removed. But, uh, so we, we take this uh, this moduli space is transversal and consists of one point. What it means that you, you consider this, this this moduli space of uh, S2 with three mark points hits this two P1, P2, this one, and then they have this fiber product. So each individual moduli space, three of the individual moduli spaces, you assume to be transversal, and the final product is uh, transversal. <coughs> and then, for simplicity, even for simplicity, you assume that this is just one point. So, th so this is the situation. So usually in them, you don't have anything to more to see. But then, so now I want to consider this, this particular point, and this is contained in this uh, final product, this compactification on this four product, and this is some, something like this. And uh, as, as, I, as, as you remember that proof of associativity in a gromov witten theory, we use this uh, moduli spaces to, to study somehow uh, associativity, proof of associativity. But then, then uh, so what I want to mention is that in this particular situations, you have this bit configurations, but you have some limit, so something like a, a, something like the S2 with two kind of almost a bubble, which converges to this particular configurations. And this guy is actually this joint from D. Because this is multiplicity 2, multiplicity 3, multiplicity minus 5. So if you glue them, we have some homology class whose interface number with D is 0. So if you have uh, any homology curve which is uh, very close to this guy, that, is, that should be contained in the divisor complex. So what is actually the, what happens in the case is that you have a sequence of uh, S2 in the divisor complement which converges to this particular configuration. So now I want to so so now something I want to remind you is that this particular element which I draw here is actually in a fiber of x x12. So I am so so what I what I what, so what the, the picture is, is this, right? So 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 if you go start this guy and you forgot uh, the map, I mean you usually forget your map from the uh, stable map compact, stable map to the daily manifold is you forgot the maps, but then this component is uh, unstable. 
So you have to shrink this component. So you get this, uh, this particular element. Yeah, so this particular element, right? I mean, x1, d, z1, z2, the same component. d3, z4, the same component. So we have this particular isolated point, which lies over this uh, x1, 2. And uh, something we need to study is that uh, we want to use cobordism argument between phi band x1, 2 and phi band of x1, 4. So we want to see how this one behave in this neighborhood. And that is very much a kind of main issue I want to study. So now, let me remind you that, you know, that the proof of the associativity is we take this path between x1, 2 and x1, 4, and we use the uh, cobordism, which is the inverse image of this path. So this is something like an argument I want to do. So you, you, you have this, this path between x1, 2 and uh, x1, 4. And the, the five of x1, 2, you have this uh, configurations. I just draw in this uh, gravitational compactification. And you just go a bit from this x1, 2 on this path. Then you, I, I, want to, I want to find out how many fibers. So, you, you, so, you, so this one just kind of deformed. And uh, my, so, so you may have some, some points here. And uh, how many points correspond to this particular point? It, it is a question I want to answer. Because that, that's very important for this cobordism argument. And the answer is actually five. So you have this uh, one point in the fiber, and you just move this base a bit, then you have a five element on the fiber. So, so, that, so that, that is a bit kind of very much different from the case of Stelma compactifications. If you remember the Stelma compactifications, you see some, some configurations. And if this configuration you, you can describe by a fiber product, then this is a, in a big state of compactification, smooth point, it means that you deform it a bit, you get one. So that, that in the usual state of compactification, this, this answer should be one. But in, in, in our situations, there are something uh, different happens because uh, this, this, this guy, we describe it as a fiber product of three modular spaces carrying a irreducible component. We assume very strong assumption that it is transversal. So if you deform it, it should be one. But still, this is fine. So that, 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 that is what I want to explain. But uh, before I go further, I want to say that this, this is five, not zero. So it, it is very important because then, then it means that you cannot simply forget this particular point. Why? Yeah. So you know the the, the, the argument is uh, the argument of the associativity is something like this, right? You have a five of x one two and five of x one four, and you have this arc, and then uh, then the, the total number counted here is equal to total number counted here, and this is a cobordism argument. So this might this this end with this singular thing, but you go further, you may end up all all five points may be just smooth. I mean usual configurations which which lies on the complementary divisor. It means that uh, this guy, it, it, so you do not count this, this one is, uh, this one just remains. So this one should be equal to this guy is associativity relations. And uh, this, this, this particular configuration shows that uh, the associativity fails if we, if we just do not count this particular co configuration. So that's that, that, that one, one message. And uh, the other thing is that why this is uh, five. So you have to have some particular way of counting. And as I mentioned before, in a situation of uh, uh, in a situation of usual uh, stable map compactifications, this kind of thing is the fiber product is transversal, is a smooth point, and it's, it's five is not there is no multiplicity. But in this in this uh, situations, this fiber product is uh, transversal, but this this point in this uh, compactifications actually is still a singular point. So you just cut up it, it it comes with a multiplicity. So that, that, that is, uh, that is uh, that the point. So I want to explain how far how this, this thing happens. So something I want to do, so, so this is something I explained in uh, last year in uh, fall, but uh, since probably not so many people were there, so I want to explain this point. This is the kind of, maybe some new analytic points. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's not so much very difficult, but you need, you, there are something new happens. So I want to say that, so you, you consider this particular configuration, you have this multiplicity two and three, and then I say that this one is isolated in this fiber product, and my claim is that the neighborhood of this one has a local Kranish model, which is uh, written by this Kranish map. Sigma one, sigma two go to sigma one square minus sigma two cube. 
and uh, yeah, so the explanation of this uh, particular polarity map is the following things. So let me try to re re recall about what is this Brewing analysis, which is done in this uh, super topology analysis. So you have this uh, uh, three configurations, and you take this z as a coordinate of this particular singular point, and w as a coordinate of this particular po point, and you want to glue the source, source curve, so you have a double point in the source, and you want to re re resolve this singularity to get something smooth, then you equate z1, z zw is equal to sigma 1. So you pick some complex parameter, small complex numbers, and you identify the point z and point w if this is satisfied. So that is the usual viewing process of the source curve. And the other curve, you have this d prime here, a double prime here, and then you have a sigma 2, another component, so that the z, z, w, z prime double prime is equal to sigma 2, then you, you view this. So, so, so in this way, you have this two double point, your source curve has two complex parameters, sigma 1 and sigma 2. And that is the reason in the stable map compactifications, this appears in continental form. So it means that uh, if you glue this uh, three universal component by this parameter, let, let, us, let me call this map sig sigma, sigma 1, sigma 2. But then the story here is a bit more interesting. It's a following thing. So you, you, want to so, so you have this uh, uh, glued Riemann surface, sigma, sigma 1, sigma 2. It's actually, again, a sphere. And uh, you want to know that uh, whether, so you have this holomorphic map here, holomorphic map here, holomorphic map here. Whether you can glue this three holomorphic map to get one holomorphic map from this S2. And it, it, you, you have some uh, conditions. It is not free, you can do it. The rhythm is, is the following thing, so I just want to draw some pictures. In a sense, your D is here, and you have this very huge domain. And then you have this something here and something here. Right? And I want to write this sigma i with a chalk by that. So I want to write this sigma i is equal to e exponential minus pi i plus uh, e pi i theta i. Right? So now this 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 one. So, so suppose that this is the kind of sigma one. This this length. So this this is the kind of this this length mm -hmm. is something like a ti, t one. And this length is something like a t two. So so so, so I, I want to use the coordinate so that x minus d is uh, compact plus uh, unit square bound plus uh, zero infinity. So this is. Uh, Similar to the, uh, to the case of convex case, in a convex case, this kind of thing is used by the simple field theory. And then, then, then you take the both the logarithms, and uh, this, the, the length, natural length you came here, depends on this sigma 1 and sigma 2. And I'm sorry, this is not t1, this is twice t1. This is uh, 3t2. Because uh, the map here is something like uh, z to the power z squared, right? In, in, on, on, on this normal direction. So then z is something like that. So, 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 so then the sigma i is related to how z is related. So the, the, this length is a 2t1 and this is 3t2. So now, if you get this something with very much better defined things, this number and this number should be the same because you have this another component. So, so it means that uh, uh, sigma 1 uh, square and the sigma 2 cube should be equal. So that, that is this extra equations. Pardon? Yeah, because the multiplicity is different. Uh, it's just uh, the, the, the assumptions. We start from S2 with this 2 extra S2, and we assume that this multiplicity here is 2 and uh, other is 3. So it, uh, it's general PQ, then the equation is sigma P equal to sigma 2 Q. So it just that multiplicity appears as an as exponent. So we have this, this guy, and uh, and actually, so, so uh, actually, but this is something like related to pre-gluing. So you, you just try to use partial immunity to, to glide glue it. You need this, uh, these equations. But then uh, you, you go on analysis, then there might be some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, something perturbed. So actually, equation is not exactly sigma 2, one square is sigma 2 cube, but it's something uh, with higher order term. But that's not related to today's story. That's related to something more detailed on analytic detail of this or constructions. 
But you work out analytic details, you will see this uh, planishima, these extra uh, conditions, that is sigma 1 square and sigma 2 cube. So now, local Kranich model of our spaces on this, uh, on this modular spaces is, is just this one. It is obtained by this uh, particular map. Higher on the term does not affect the shape of singularity. So it is a ca cusp. So what's, what's important is that in, in this uh, zero, the sigma 1 equal to sigma 2 is zero, is our original point. At that point, fiber product is transversal, but it is a singular point. So that's kind of very much different from the usual stable map. So now, we consider this uh, other issue. So it is about the uh, modular parameter of this Riemann surface. So this is the Riemann surface, S2 with four map points. So it is basically just one complex number of the parameterizations. And the sigma one is used here, sigma two is used here. And this is a complex parameterization. You just think a bit about this uh, modular space of uh, S2 with four map points. It's just a product of sigma one, sigma two, right? <coughs> Something like, uh, you, you can just take this, this S1 cross R, then get sigma 1 cross sigma 2 with the parameter. So, so now, now, now we, we have to collect this information in the following way. So let me take this, uh, uh, let me take this configuration. So you have this point here, and you want to have this uh, arc here, and this I of delta, so this, uh, just, just take delta as a parameter. Then, then the fiber, you can calculate explicitly by this equations. Sigma 1, sigma 2 is a given delta, and sigma 1 square is sigma 2 cubed. And this is a very easy algebraic equation, and you have uh, exactly five solutions. So from this uh, particular uh, discussions about the Kranich map on this particular singular point, we will hand out uh, this, uh, how many things are coming here. So that is this, the reason the how, how we got this five. OK. So now, so, now, so what it means? So it means that this particular configuration, you have to cook up some, some way to define product so that this guy contributes five in this particular thing. Right? I mean, this, this is a fiber in x, x1, 2, and that should be contributed to this p1, cup product p2, and p3, and this p4. So this, this guy, this is one of the term of the associativity relations, and this particular configuration should give five in, this, uh, in, in the definition of this contribution. So, so now we have, there is some puzzle, right? You have this particular configurations, and uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a usual case, in the usual case of the associativity, we consider this kind of picture. Oh, then you, you put this uh, P1, oh. P1, P2 here, and you see what, what is the out output from this modular space. That is this cup product. And then you put the CD4, and then this is just a very natural way to, to understand it. But in this case, it's kind of, uh, there is some puzzle because you have these two map points and some strange multiplicity, and how it comes is, is, is a kind of puzzle. And then, First, I want to show you the answers to the puzzles. So now, 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 something very obvious is that you know th th this one. So, 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 so this one should, should go through something on, on the divisors. So, so this this doesn't rise on something on the x minus d part, but on the part which you have the power on on, on, on on d. So now I want to define this way. So, you know, so, so here, what is important is that you have this all, both this negative and the positive exponent. So, yeah, I, I think one should write SD, but let me write D for one. So let me consider this H. And then we, so, 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 so now on this, you just take D, you have this one kind of variety. It, it's very strange, but you have a positive and negative force, so you have a natural one kind of variety. You just multiply and then they take the case of this sum of zero. That is the usual one kind of variety. So now I want to consider this. This, this, this configuration, then P1, P2, and you have Q minus 2R. This means that the, this is a coefficient of Q square, because the Poincaré duality is a Q square, Q minus square as well. So, so this, this, this calculates the coefficient of Q minus square. This should be the kind of 
this should be you have this uh, R P1 P2 and you count this configuration. So that, that is I think uh, something which usually people observe in a relative group of Witten theory. In a relative group of Witten theory you have some uh, modular space of spheres with given tangency of the divisors and they count it. So this 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 one is some some version of this relative group of Witten theory in value. But uh, you have something else. So the, it is this picture. But you have something else, uh, and uh, yeah, you have another point. So it is this configuration. So you have some S2 and which another S2, which completely relies on this, and you have this multiplicity 3. And you have to count this in order to get the correct things. Well, what is this? This, uh, what, 3 is there? This one, this yeah. is S2 with two mark points. This, this, this part? No, no, 3. 3, three yeah. is a relative multiplicity 3. So if you, for example, you have this S2, and if you kind of uh, take some, uh, if you put in an infinitely small neighborhood of the divisors, you have this minus five degree. So you, suppose you have a po pole of order two here, then we have another, only another pole, the, the order of the pole is necessarily three. That is this three. Are you implicitly lifting the projected bundle? Over yes, the, yes, so, yes, so yes. Choosing a lift going to zero or infinity depending yeah. on the Plus or minus size. Yeah, yes, yes. That's that auto automatic. In this case, they have a vibrating intersection. So now, I want to define. So this is a kind of uh, give a coefficient of q minus 3, q to the power minus 3. Then you consider this configuration. So p1 is here, p2 here. You have this intersection that you go here and here. That is this, uh, this, this configuration. And uh, I want to count this with this uh, with the number of these configurations times 2. And two is uh, this two. And uh, maybe maybe I can explain the reason later. But uh, something which is very important is that <laughs> this one should exist, otherwise everything is zero. So this is a coefficient of negative q negative q. Now the other part looks uh, very much similar. So here are these uh, configurations, which start from here with this guy. So this is the minus of the two. The, this one is uh, just to count these configurations with, with three. Three is this, 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 this multiplicity here. And the last one is this. So this one is just with, uh, well, this is again usual, uh, usual, uh, usual uh, relative, relative ground fitness theory by You have a minus three R here, and P3 and P4, this is just count this number. So now, I want to, calculate this this thing. So this one, you, you, you can just consider the k minus 2 and 3. And the case this minus 2 appears, then this 3 comes from this this part. And this one, has a, and the, but this one, 2 came from this part. So this one contribute 3, this second one contribute 2, then you have 5. And in the case it's not 2 and 3, but in p and q, then the same multiplicity you can just take this uh, Sigma 1, sigma 1 p is equal to sigma 1 q, and sigma 1, sigma 2 is delta. So this is a kind of general case. You have this multiplicity p and q. Then you have a p plus q solutions. And in the same way, you have this p and q from these two different kind of uh, solutions. So, so th this, is, this is nice. And, and in this way, you can recover this uh, the failure. Okay, so now what we, what we know here is that uh, so this, this point corresponds to some 5 on this uh, kind of generalized definition of the associativity, and then you have some another side, just as usual things. So you just do this for any of these places, then you are very much likely to get this uh, associativity relations. So that, that's a kind of basic part of the argument, how we prove this associativity. And uh, 15 minutes left, so I want to, uh, I want to explain some um, some motivations why this uh, uh, this two and three is coming. So I want to this kind of things I want to use dark mode. And that, uh, yeah. So now, now what I consider is, uh, is, is this configuration, right? Two. Uh, and I, I want to I want to count this uh, twice. Uh, 
yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's much better. Yeah. So I want to count this two. So why this is two? So now I want to try to redo this uh, Grun analysis. So there is a Z here, there is a W here. Then, uh, uh, and then I want to equate ZW for sigma, so you have this kind of calculations. But unfortunately, th this one is almost never give a good map to x. Why? So, so, you, so you have this u1, u2, and uh, as I said that u2, Actually, first I want to uh, extend this map to S2 minus two points to this, um, maybe not project space bundle, but it's sister bundle, so normal bundle, dx minus d. And ho how to do it? You have this uh, two and three, then you have this S2, which is a kind of map to, to d, and then this is a kind of a minus five, degree minus five line bundle. So you have exactly one uh, meromorphic solutions which are the pole, pole of order two here and pole of order three here. So you can use it to lift it. But then uh, then, uh, then we can do, do this gluing here, so you're using this guy, and, and this one actually is kind of, you know, this this one is something related to this x minus d. So a way in, 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 in a neighborhood of zero section here is identified to the neighborhood of d in x minus d. So you can do this uh, gluing here. And, 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 uh, and this gluing actually has a, uh, yeah, we can do this gluing. So now, why it's, why it's wrong is that uh, this part, this part goes to uh, normal bundle minus d, but this is the part, this normal bundle minus d, you cannot identify to x, because it, it is outside of x. So by this gluing, you can never find the correct element. So now, what, what is it? So now, you have this kind of sigma. So sigma is a zw called sigma. And then you have another row, Rho is actually sigma square. Then uh, I want to uh, kind of glue u1 and rho times u2. This is actually th th this one. So now, but then, uh, then uh, this one is actually a good solution. So this kind of solution is something which we call inconsistent solutions. It is a kind of map to, to uh, this part map to x, x minus d. This part mapped with this uh, normal bundle, and it matches the overall <laughs> part, but it's never become a global map. So it's, it's a kind of strange thing. But then this one is a good solution only when uh, rho is zero, then this is okay because this is a kind of similar configuration. So this one should go to this projective space bundles. So only in a low, low equal to zero, this gives a good solution. So now in this case, the Kuranishi map should be sigma square is rho equal to zero. And this, this Kranish map has multiplicity 2. That's why I think it is reasonable to count this with multiplicity 2. So that, that, that's, that's a similar thing to other, 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 other stories. So in this kind of story, so you always have kind of, even each, each strata has some kind of normal direction has some singularity. And if you count this singularity correctly using Kranish map, you get a correct answer. So that is how this, uh, how this uh, part is uh, um, detected. And then, can I go back to this slide? Here, here to, is here? No, no. No, just okay. about Yeah, so now I want to, I want to, so, so these two pages I had in this morning. So, so there is a problem about the Q0 and the issue of the modular spaces. Well, one reason is that, uh, you know, kind of, I just, I just take this, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, the, 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 this is similar to my handwriting, and <laughs> it is much worse. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, the other slide was much more readable. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so before I, I just take this uh, um, cycles, compact cycle, which are wave from D. But the problem is, uh, if you want to you study this quantum cup product, you need to use uh, Poincare duality. And the uh, cohomology of X minus D is not actually uh, satisfy Poincare duality. Poincare du duality of cohomology of X minus D is a kind of relative cohomology. So you have to think about what is Poincare duality things are going. And uh, that is related to this uh, Q equal zero part of the story. Q is positive part, and Q is negative part, you already see how it appears. 
And this Q equals zero part, I, I, I honestly say that I don't know how to, how to handle it correctly. I, I'm pretty sure that there is a way to do so, but uh, I, I, I didn't work it out. So now it is a way, I, I, I think it, it, it may work. So we consider somehow, you know, to, to, to write that down, that you need some kind of a chain model. The chain model I want to use the following thing. First, you take some uh, 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 pair of H. H is a differential form. So H is a differential form of Nx minus D. But I want to put some uh, metric so that H minus D has a, some cylindrical metric. It means that the compact set times unit square bound plus uh, half interval. Then that, that H is a differential form. I don't know. F is a differential, S1 equivalent form or over this uh, unit, unit circle, uh, circle bundles. And I want to require this H is asymptotic to F in exponential order. So you have something like that. So this, this is some kind of a relative cohomology. And this is the usual relative cohomology in this particular version. But then, then uh, and also, I want to split this S1 equivalent part of, of, of uh, unit S1 bundle into two parts. One is something which is pulled back from the device of D. The other is uh, this pulled back uh, with, with theta. Theta is a uh, connection form, S1. Connection form on this S1 part. So you have this kind of part which contains S1 and which does not contain S1. And then, then uh, I think uh, I just want to take the pair of H of F and so that F is contained in the part when that it doesn't contain theta. I mean, I want to take one of them to be a correct model. One reason is that this guy, uh, uh, you can see, has some kind of a very naturally to have a one kind of one. This, I mean, because on the boundary, this guy and this guy is a kind of complement of the one divide. So if you take one of them, it's kind of Lagrangian on this uh, one kind divide on the boundary. So you take both of them, it's not one kind divide. So you take half of them, you get one kind And I want to take this. And if the other reason that this, this, this looks to be reasonable is the following things. I'm sorry, I just use. So if you consider these configurations, Right? Then I think, I think next page. Yeah. So we consider this configuration. Yeah. Since I feel my handwriting is too too bad, I I should start uh, writing to the <laughs> computer. But uh, I can just do this. You consider this configuration, and the G zero is here, and you consider this M three x beta. Then then um, you know G one G two is, is just everywhere, and you consider that you put back the variation form H one here and H two here, and they vary at G zero. And then, then everything will just go to D. So th this may not be a kind, th this, this, this push out may not be compact support in general, in a non-compact cases. But you can see that if G0 approaches here, you have a bubble, and if you see this kind of grilling analysis here, you will exactly see that this one is in this particular subset, so that this one is a kind of, either do not have a theta direction, or maybe do not have theta direction. Because uh, this is one equivalent means that the evaluation map, so it's, it's one of them. So, so, so this is the correct thing, and you put it back here, because of this uh, S1 invariance, you have, to cons you have to put back the differential form which has a theta part. Otherwise, everything is zero, because this is S1 equivalent. <coughs> so if you take these correct choices, then you get this kind of, you, you, you can calculate these kind of things in, in, that, in that particular category. Then, then I want to define this boundary operator, something like this, so you have this H of F, and then each, each of them is just divided, but you have, you have shift F here. And, and, uh, and, and this kind of things. It is a bit, uh, kind of thing. This is not yet completely done, but you, I, I believe that you take some uh, nice relative homology model on this uh, x minus d and d, and uh, to put it on a zero spot, and then then the, the story works uh, to get at least some uh, associative ring structures. And you have this uh, s1. Uh, you have also kind of bottom without. So this is a kind of s1. I think this is not. Like yeah, non-equivalent part. But you have S1 equivalent part, you have S only part, part, one of them, and each of the interior homology of X minus D contribute to the homology of CP infinity. So you have another, another version, and you have this, all of this, which, which, which related to kind of naturally, and that should give this the gestion Harvard algebra. And that fits in the story, which, which goes to, to this uh, uh, host homology and cyclic homology of this cat maybe the category, so that uh, everything works. And that I hope that this, 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 this works in complete reality for a smooth divisor. And in place of just have one Q, you, you have, have a normal cross divisor. And each elusive component, you, you, you associate some QI. 
then you have some uh, bigger group kind of deformation parameter associated to each of these dividers and you have this uh, yes they have algebra structure in a similar way and then I, I believe we have this uh, story and uh, here I only consider this Ramanian sum manifold which is compact and away from dividers but there is a way to include Ramanian sum manifold which intersects on the dividers the condition is uh, in, in this particular case if the condition is uh, Lagrangian sum manifold and the divisor is a uh, bounded and you have a kind of, in the normal directions, you have this uh, R invariance. So, this, so then, and then again, the Lagrangian player theory of L has some Q component. You have a compact Lagrangian sum manifold, you don't have any Q component. But here you have a Q component, and this Lagrangian player theory, in a, in a convex case, I expect exactly much to this uh, wrapped player homology. So, so I, mean, I think this is Q, Q inverse. And if you, have a, if you try to do this, in a case when this divisor is not necessarily convex, then you have to include Q inverse by some very similar reasons. And, and then you can just construct this uh, versions. And I think this kind of version is very much similar. Uh, this kind of uh, version in a near infinity of the symplectic homology is, is studied by uh, Rabinovitz, free homology, by various people. But, you know, yeah, various, but Rabinovitz, Rabinovitz free homology is either con convex and concave. Right? So, so probably, I think this, this Chilipak wrote something about the stable Hamiltonian structures. And the whole structure theory should be generalized to the stable Hamiltonian structures. Then you, you lose this this action, but only other actions. So you have extra boundary operators. And uh, something I expect in the future is that in place of taking this uh, just smooth divisor, you have, you have some generalization of Rabinovich free homology or this kind of stories which correspond to normal crossing divisor. So you have some, uh, some, some, any, 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 not, so something like, a, I mean, yeah, so, so it means that uh, in a, in a, um, in a stable Hamiltonian structure, you have uh, R actions in the neighborhood. Then you have uh, two uh, normal closing divisors. You have a sister action correspond to one divisor. Another sister action correspond to the other divisor. And over interact part, you have the sister cross sister actions. And then you have the kind of similar thing in place of sister actions. You have R action in some part of the, no infinity and R action in the other part of the infinity and in overlapped part you have R, R cross R actions. And then you can just uh, continue uh, after many hours and that is somehow expected to give some very general pictures of non-compact symplectic topologies and the with the clear theory and then I believe that you have some version of this quantum cohomology and some version of the clear theory and close open one. And that, that, that kind of thing I believe to be useful in a mirror symmetry. Okay, I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Sorry, in the, in the complex case, this, uh, the string doesn't depend on the P at all, right? So that's right, yeah. So, but uh, in this case, it does? So that's a good, good question. At the beginning, I thought that uh, you can just define kind of uh, a whole story of quasi projective variety. But something which I feel is that if you grow up something, then then you have some extra parameter. So something something I can prove is that if you consider the Lagrangian flare theory, which do not intersect, which use just only this, then if you deform this uh, divisor in a continuous way, then it is in independent. But you include this uh, thing, then you have this uh, uh, logical parameter, of, of course, changes, and you have several divisors that grow up. Probably it, 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 it actually depends. So how it performs in the industry? Actually, I could close the picture earlier, but it's the, 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 the you construct some kind of space with duality, but over another field, so it's of you, it's will be infinite dimensional space, yeah? Yes. Yeah, uh, we find a dimension each degree, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, it, it's just a kind of uh, perfect duality over another field. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I mean, not only not complete, but also have this Q parameter. Yeah. But you have this positive, positive infinity Q and negative infinity Q. Yeah. So the, the coefficient of Q to the power K yeah. is dual to Q to the power minus K. I see. So that, that's in a sense beta because in the convex case you have only positive Q. Yeah. So you don't expect any quantum variety. Yeah. Ah, so yeah. you backhand to the yeah. convex yeah. case. Yeah. Adam? Ah, that's a good question. Sir. I, I never thought about it. So you have a kind of, just, just a kind of divisors, right? I mean, yeah. not that positive. Then I don't know, kind of random Gintzberg model things. I, I, I don't know. 
I mean, one, one, one strange thing is that you have a positive and negative power Q. And in a usual convex case, you can put Q is zero. Just forget it. And then the Q is positive part is a kind of deformation. Mm -hmm. But the positive and negative, so you cannot put Q equal to zero. So it's a, it's a kind of thing. Any more questions? Well, let's thank Kenji again. <laughs> and we'll start again in half an hour.